devastating China-Japan war. Russian study says U.S. could easily defeat Beijing in nuclear conflict as the president of China and others in the last month have said prepare for all-out multi-theater conventional war and nuclear war with the United States. And, of course, they said last week in the uh, People's Daily and uh, other state-run media that they are going to invade Philippine Islands that they claim uh, really belong to China, that Japan took, and they're also going to take other uh, disputed islands uh, by Japan. And if that happens, there will be war. Now, I understand Justin Bieber's in the news. He got a DWI, and that's very important as well. Uh, but uh, we're not going to be talking about that. I already talked about entertainment industry and the mass mental illness uh, of it and people being distracted, uh, you know, fiddling while Rome burns. But we are joined for the next 25 minutes by Professor Margaret McMillan from Oxford. Uh, I'm going to be out at Oxford uh, in the middle of March doing a keynote speech. I look forward to doing that. I always wanted to go to Oxford. Honored to do that. And uh, she has MargaretMcMillan.com. She's a prestigious professor. Uh, and uh, is the fifth warden of St. Anthony's College in 2007. She was educated at University of Toronto a College and Oxford University. She is a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature and a senior fellow at Massey College, University of Toronto. And I'm not going to go over uh, on, the, on the boards of Mosaic Institute, Reuters Institute for the Study of Journalism and the Editorial Boards of International History and uh, First uh, World War Studies. She's an expert on the World War, First World War. Professors, uh, publications include Women, of the Raja and uh, well as peacemakers, the Paris Conference in 1919 and its attempt to make peace for which she won many awards. I'm not going to go over the rest of her uh, letters and all the work she's done. Her most recent book is The War That Ended Peace, How Europe's Abandoned Peace from the First World War. I guess that goes into Versailles. I haven't read it. Um, she comments frequently in the media and she joins us now, uh, margaretmcmillan.com. Thank you so much for coming on, uh, Professor. And uh, I want to get into the, the, the report I saw at the London Independent. Uh, is it 1914 all over again? We are in danger of repeating the mistakes that started World War I, says a leading historian. So thanks for coming on and, and, and tell us about the parallels and your concern. Well, there's some things that concern me. I mean, I don't think history ever repeats itself. I think we get similarities, but the conditions are so different. I mean, the 21st century is very different from 100 years ago. But I think what is concerning is we seem to have nationalist rivalries between countries. Um, you have a rivalry developing, as, as you were mentioning earlier on, in the South China Seas, which has the potential for sparking off further tensions and conflicts. You have international... Um, ideologies in the years before 1914, they were international ideologies of, of anarchists, for example. Um, today you have international um, ideologies, of uh, religious ideologies or ultra-religious ideologies. So I think we live in a, in a slightly turbulent time. You, you have, we have globalization. Both ages are very globalized, and I think you have people worried about the impact of globalization, um, perhaps turning to, to, to their homes and, and feeling rather defensive. So I think that there are similarities. I mean, I don't think we're bound to end up in the same way they did in 1914, but you always have to be careful. Uh, I forget the exact quote, uh, but basically history doesn't repeat, but it, it kind of rhymes. Who was it said that? Mark Twain. Mark Twain. And, yeah. and, and, and humans act the same, even though we have almost godlike weapons and technology now, would be godlike you know, to, the, uh, to the ancients, Professor. But if you look at global crises, currency devaluations, uh, you know, armies lining up on borders, uh, groups not compromising... Uh, really, I see the West driving conflict, uh, and I'm obviously not a fan of what Russia and China do. I'm an American, uh, and I'm you know, a Westerner, but at the same time, I, I really see the West uh, as as filling uh, the shoes of the villain uh, in many respects compared to our position in the past. Well, what's your take on that? Well, I think human nature doesn't really change that much. I mean, I think we like to think we're a lot more sophisticated than the caveman. I'm not sure we are. I mean, I think we're still driven, at least in part, by emotions and fears. And I think what's really dangerous is when people lack or nations lack the ability to see things from the other person's point of view. And so what nations do to defend themselves and what we do to defend ourselves as individuals, we may think we're just being defensive, we're just looking out for ourselves, but that may really look like aggression from the other side. And I think that's when it gets dangerous, when you fail to understand what the other person might be thinking. And I think what's also dangerous, and you see it with individuals and you see it with nations again, 
is when their pride gets involved and when their prestige gets involved. I mean, you, you, you know, I think an analogy is, is the members of gangs um, who, to me, rather like knights in the Middle Ages, they'd rather die than be dishonored. And so I think this is, this is the perennial strain in human nature. Now, we, we, we've got a more sensible side, and I think we've got a more reasonable side, and we've got a side where we do reach out, we do try and understand each other. So, you know, I never like to think that, that history is going to repeat itself, but I, I think we, can, we, should be warned, we should be careful about being too complacent. History doesn't repeat. It, it does rhyme, and, 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 and I think that is true as Mark Twain said it. I mean, here's the issue. You look at the moral authority of the United States or England, or many European countries. Look at France in, in, in the just disheveled nature that it's going into from, from what I've been seeing and, and traveling and, and witnessing. And there is, I see a, a cyclical, and of course there's cycles within cycles, and I'd like you to speak to that, Professor, because you're an expert on that. I do see us going into a very sick bottom of the cycle. All the same indicators, the decadence, the debt, the corruption, uh, the uh, almost laissez-faire attitude of dictatorial government and corporations, the power grabbing, and as the establishment senses that, it makes basically everyone become even more feverish, including myself, adding to almost the uh, same electrical hysteria uh, that you see in mass movements uh, of, of almost like you know rats overpopulated in the sewers killing each other. Uh, I, I mean, I'm just kind of throwing a gestalt out there. Uh, what's your take on what I'm saying? pretty gloomy picture you have, and I hope it's not all true, but, um, you know, I think there are things we need to look out for in our own societies. I mean, I don't worry about government debt so much because government debt, if it's going into building infrastructure, I think is actually positively a good thing, just like we borrow to buy houses through mortgages. But what I do think is worrying, and I think it's affecting a lot of Western societies, is the growing gap between the very rich and the very poor and the way the middle class is getting squeezed out. And that isn't good for society. It leads to tensions. It leads to a lack of links between the different groups and societies. And I think you don't want a society in which a very few people at the top control a great deal of the resources of that society and are able to live in a way which, which insulates them from the problems of society because it means you know, they're probably going to be, have less understanding and less empathy for those who are less fortunate than themselves. Separately, what other historical trends are you seeing? And, 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 then, and then flesh out if you can some of the parallels that they were reporting on uh, that, that, that you've seen, I guess, would it be geopolitically uh, with parallels with 1914 and, and 2014? Uh, well, one that a lot of people have talked about, including me, and I don't know if we're right. Um, the thing about talking about the present is, is you're usually much too close to it to get a, a very good view of it. But it seems to me you do have tensions in the world internationally now because you have what had been a dominant power no longer as dominant as it was. It doesn't mean it's, it's that much weaker, but it's no longer quite as dominant as it was. Before 1914, that was the British Empire, which was the world's biggest empire, the biggest empire the world has ever seen, um, hugely powerful, had the world's biggest navy, had been the world's biggest manufacturing power, but that was now being challenged. And you had a Britain and its empire that was very conscious that it was beginning to slip a bit, that it had competitors like the United States and Germany and Japan. And it seems to me today that you have the United States, which, you know, for much of the Cold War and certainly after the Cold War was overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly the most important and powerful country in the world. It's no longer perhaps quite as powerful as it was. And that can lead to tension because nations that feel themselves to be slipping a little bit may, may react um, in ways that aren't always predictable. And nations that sort of feel that they haven't yet got their share in the sun can be aggressive and not very tactful. I mean, Germany was not tactful before the First World War. It was sort of pushing its way into the, the world order and, and throwing its weight around. And I, I would say that China's not being particularly tactful today. And so it doesn't make for an easy international situation managing these shifts, often very subtle shifts, in, in the international order. Uh, exactly. I mean, uh, China's not being tactful when they basically say, you know, prepare the nuclear weapons for war with the United States. That is a uh, brazen escalation uh, and, and, and qu quite frankly, frightening.